Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the sweeping reforms in Guatemala from the 1940s to the 1950s. In our previous class, we spoke about the impact of the Great Depression and World War II on the economies and social cohesion or social status of Central America. And one of the major things that we noted was that the economic decline, the decline in the exports of coffee, the decline in the exports of banana, had a drastic economic impact on the economies of Central America, which eventually led to... Um, high unemployment and um, rates of poverty that were rising. So today we're going to be talking about, as I had stated, the sweeping reforms in Guatemala. So we're going to be looking at a case study in particular to understand what was occurring in Central America. Guatemala, way up to the 1940s, still had a dictatorship. And because of the Great Depression and because of World War II, the effects of World War II as well, the people began to create uprisings that would be fighting for a process of election or at least free elections whereby dictatorships would be eliminated and presidents would be elected so there are two pictures here to introduce this class the one on the right is a picture of the person named jorge ubico he was a dictator of guatemala way up to the 1940s uh, uh, very interesting fact about jorge ubico was that jorge ubico was actually the one who started or reignited um, the guatemalan claim for belize way up to the, in the 1940s the picture on the left is a picture of um, young people, as you can see, middle-aged people, um, mostly middle-class people as well, who are celebrating the detrimentment of um, Jorge Ubico. So today we're going to be looking at three things. One, we're going to identify three characteristics that made Guatemala a more democratic state. Two, we're going to describe two reforms instilled by Arevalo in Guatemala. Arevalo is the person that was elected right after Ubico fell. And three, we're going to examine the impact of the agrarian reform of 1952. Now the agrarian reform was something that was created by a guy by the name of Jacob Arbenz who coincidentally was elected right after Arevalo. So what is important about this is that Arevalo, both Arevalo and um, Jacob Arbenz were progressivist leaders meaning they were leaning towards socialism and they wanted uh, reform to happen within their, their country. And one of these reforms was particularly the distribution of land the provision of workers' rights, the provision of social security, and many other things that relate to creating a more equal society or promoting equity in a society. So to start off, 1944 was a big year for Guatemala. In the 1940s, as I had stated, a revolution was fomented by a middle-class people or a group of middle-class people led by students and military men whereby they began to fight or they began to argue in favor of the creation of a elected system or electoral system, sorry, whereby it would be democratic, where people would be the ones who would be electing who would be their president. In this case, they were pressuring so much that Jorge Ubico eventually had to resign. And in 1944, there was the first free election in Guatemala following the democratic system or a democratic way. And in this case, Juan Jose Arevalo became the president. He was elected the president. And as I had stated earlier, he was a progressivist. So he, in on many instances, described himself as a spiritual socialist as well. But as he got into power, he amended the constitution. And now I want us to, to pay attention particularly to, to these aspects that are on the lower left. Because these aspects also relate to democracy. One, you see that there is an open government, meaning a government that can be... Um, scrutinized by the media, a government that can be scrutinized, questioned by the people. Um, the constitution was a lot more liberal. You have a, a lot of democratic institutions being created, um, people or branches of government that would be looking for poverty alleviation, branches of, branches of government that would be looking for promoting um, human rights or promoting women's rights, etc. So uh, what you see is that there is a shift of focus, right? Freedom of press. And they also allowed for opposition parties to be formed and for opposition parties to contest elections. So this was a very important process towards democracy. And all of these things, in essence, um, are promoting the idea that the people have the voice and the people are the ones who are going to guide who, how the country is going to be run and who is going to run the country. So Juan Jose Arevalo, as soon as he got into power, as I had stated, he, cons he considered himself a, a, sp a spiritual socialist. What he began to do was be, was very, very socialist in a way. He began to force large landowners to rent their lands to the, to the peasants at low prices. He began to pass laws that protected workers' rights. So, um, Jose Arevalo was a philosophy lecturer at, at the university. And because he was a philosopher lecturer, 
to an extent he was very in tune with the, with the socialist ideas although he never described himself as a communist and he never described himself as a far leftist meaning he was not totally aligned to socialism but he considered himself as a person that would be promoting some sort of equity in a society and then um, right after Jose Arevalo, Jose Arevalo, um, to, his legacy is also connected to the construction of uh, various road works, to the construction of schools, to the construction of the care of um, hospitals, and he was basically looking at the interests of the people. Um, in 1944, he had decided not to um, run again. Uh, sorry, in, in 1944, at the end of his term, he he had decided not to run again. And at that point, it was his minister of defense, a guy by the name of Jacobo Arbenz, that ran in, um, in the election. Jacobo Arbenz was successful, and by 1949, Jacobo Arbenz was becoming the new president. One of the major things to note about Jacobo Arbenz was that he continued the projects that Juan Jose Arevalo had started. And by 1952, he had instituted an agrarian reform whereby he authorized the redistribution of unused lands to peasants from large, large estates to more than 23 that, that have more sorry than 223 acres this is very important because what what you see happening is that Arbenz is now trying to undo what the system had created whereby the system had concentrated land ownership to us to a, to a small amount of a rich or elite class and big companies so now Arbenz is trying to distribute this land to the peasant classes. And this particular um, policy was beginning to be practiced in the western region of Guatemala. So now you see the peasants, the workers, the people that did not have land starting to receive some sort of land. And in this case, what you see happening is that Arbenz ordered the government to basically expropriate land. What do you mean by expropriate land? Take away legally, right? So the government went into these uh, and, and evaluated the large land holdings and said, okay, you have too much land, we're going to take some of that and we're going to distribute it to the poor. And in this case, what is key here is that the government had already stated that the owners would be compensated based on the recorded value or the recorded assessed value. Now, here is a very important concept. Why? Because many companies would assess the value of their lands at less so that they would pay less tax. And this was the case for a big company in Guatemala. Um, again, what is, what is important to note about this is that one, the Guatemalan government was now taking away land from the ultra rich and the big companies and giving it to the poor. Two, the Guatemalan government was paying a compensation based on the recorded value. On the recorded value remember the recorded value was reflected on the amount of taxes they paid so there was something that was controversial about this why because there were many big companies that had decided to um, provide reports of the value of their land at less and such was the case of the United Food Company. So the United Food Company wanted to pay less taxes. And because they wanted to pay less taxes, they had reported that the value of their lands was less. And when the expropriation process started, led by Jacobo Arbenz, what you see occurring is that because they had undervalued their land, the government was now only paying less than a million dollars for their land, for the lands claimed by the UFC. And obviously, now the UFC wants to come up with the true value of their land. And they were saying that their land was worth more than $16 million. So there was a clash of ideas here, whereby the UFC had for so long cheated the system. And now when Jacobo Arbenz is coming in, Jacobo Arbenz is using um, the same things that the UFC had done to, in a way, expropriate a land and pay significantly less than what the UFC wanted. So that's a very important moment. Why? Because as you're going to see later on, the UFC, which is an agent of the USA, did not stay happy. So for today's class, um, I simply want you guys to think about two things. I want you to um, answer two questions in particular. And this would be in paragraph form, of course. The second one, the first one could be in one or two sentences. Why do you think that the creation of an open government, democratic institution, free press, opposition, and opposition parties are important characteristics of, the, of democracy? You can research more about this and then create a, an answer that could be two to three par, um, sentences long. The second question is where I want you to focus a lot more, and this is where I want a paragraph. 